mic battery is low, which means I need to talk very quickly. I don't, we'll see, we'll see. Hello and welcome back to Red Ink on YouTube. Today I want to talk about my experience with the 21 day tone challenge by Vlogalotti. And just a quick disclaimer, I didn't take any before and after measurements or photos and I'll explain why later. In the past, I've tried different Vlogalotti's challenges but I found that I would just not finish them. I would get three days in or seven days in and then I would just quit. It's about 12.06 November 27th. So I think this is day five or six. I think it's going to be my last day recording. And I think that it's because of two main reasons. One, the workouts were a lot harder than I was mentally prepared for. And two, I didn't have enough motivation or the right motivation to help me get through those difficult workouts. And so I would just stop. Going back to that first point of the workouts were harder than I was mentally prepared for. A lot of these challenges are framed as it's just seven minutes or it's just for 21 days it's just 21 minutes it's just this honestly you guys some of these will take two to three minutes and i think the longest one might take like five to eight but it is a small chunk of time and you can do this and so i had it in my head that oh this should be easy this sounds easy oh i'm supposed to be able to get through just seven minutes just 21 minutes the challenge is to be active for at least 21 minutes a day for 21 days straight. That's it. And so even though I knew that these challenges would be difficult, I never really let myself accept them as difficult. And so I find myself either really frustrated with where I was and how much I was able to put into these workouts, or I would find myself overexerting um, myself to try and live up to my expectations. The first day I would, you know, struggle through it. The second day I would struggle through it. And the third day I would be like, I'm exhausted. I'm mentally exhausted. I'm physically exhausted. When my expectations didn't meet my reality, I would lose motivation. Going into this challenge, I knew that I needed a different mindset. And so I made my own rules. I got no rules I count Number one. I wouldn't exercise for seven consecutive days. The way the official calendar is set up, you have six days on and the seventh day is reserved for a stretching routine. But it was still a video that you had to watch and so it was 21 days on. When I hit around day six and I had a headache and I was just feeling gross and I was exhausted, I let myself take the day off and then I went ahead and did the day six workout on day seven. Right now, I am approximately four or five days behind. Uh, the challenge officially ended today on the 25th of January, or actually yesterday, today. But I still have about a week left and I'm okay with that. Number two, I would take longer than 15 second breaks in between moves. Most of the videos are organized to have three rounds of seven moves that are 45 seconds on and 15 seconds off. And there were times that I just sat out for an entire minute and I was like, you know what? This one's not for me. There was one day I sat out for an entire round. So instead of doing three rounds of the workout, I only did two. Number three, I would embrace the modified or the beginner versions of the moves. There is no shame in modification. Sometimes I would do an even more modified version than the modified version, but it got me to do the workout, got me to do the exercises versus just giving up. Number four, I would give myself props for simply showing up. If I attempted the workout for that day, it was a win and I gave myself a little check mark on the calendar. I think the biggest thing that I learned from this challenge was the art of letting myself not be perfect and being happy and proud of what I am able to accomplish. And that way I was able to enjoy the challenge more and I think I was able to push myself further because I knew that no matter how hard I pushed, I would meet my goal in a way. Uh, is that a cop out? I don't know, but it works for me. And I, I think that it's somewhat healthy. I think, I don't know. Ooh. Number five, I would only put in the amount of energy that I had for that day. No matter what my performance had been in days past, I wanted to make sure that I was developing a sustainable habit and not burning myself out. So my thoughts thus far on the challenge are that I thought it was really fun. I liked that she switched it up and used weights instead of just doing pure body weight exercises like she has in the past. I thought that was very cool. You don't need the weights, but it was fun to have the option if you wanted it. And 
and I'm, I'm really proud of what I was able to accomplish and I didn't take before and after measurements or pictures like I said because I wanted to focus more on the act of showing up and trying and not worry about if I was getting some sort of physical result because it was enough of a mental battle to do it at all. Physically, I found that the exercises were difficult but not impossible. I had to concentrate a lot when I was doing them, but I felt like I could get through them. But one thing that did scare me at the beginning was that in every video she would say, oh, so this is our level three ab workout. This is our level three blah, blah, blah. And I've been doing blah, blah, blah on and off for years and years, but I still don't feel super confident in it. And so the fact that she kept saying level three, I was, I was scared. It was like, I don't want level three. I just want level one, like level 0.5. Uh, uh, ooh. But it was okay. It was fine. It was fine. And as much as I was nervous that this was level three Pilates, whatever that means, it, a lot of the moves were super familiar. Uh, she has done them in the past in a lot of videos over the years. It was less concentration than if every single move had been brand new. And for the moves that were new, um, you learn them pretty quickly because one, a lot of the exercises, you do three rounds of them, and two, the exercises repeat every week or the workouts repeat every week. And so if you didn't know it in the first round, you know, by the sixth or the ninth time that you're doing it in the month, you'll know it. So overall, I really like the videos. They're fairly easy to follow. I did end up using my own music or listening to a podcast while I did the workout just to keep it interesting and to give me something else to focus on other than the clock. I, I don't know if I would recommend this challenge. It was a lot of fun and I would say if you're interested in doing it, go for it. Uh, try it for a day or a week or the whole 21 days, do it for three months on repeat, I don't know. Um, I would say just try it and if you like it, you like it and if you don't like it, it's okay, at least you try it. I think it's definitely worth trying. And if you are intimidated by the level three-ness of the videos or by the length, the 21 minute length, then I would recommend doing the exercises for shorter. So do one round instead of all three or do two rounds or whatever combination you want to do. Or uh, there are a lot of five minute and seven minute workouts on the Blog Aladdis Challenge, challenge, channel, <laughs> channel that you can try out and decide if Pilates is for you. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below if you tried the 21 day tone challenge. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Have you tried other really popular fitness challenges like the Chloe Tink challenge or whatever? Um, let me know what you think of them.